I don't even know what to say. I don't, I, I don't get it. So three years ago, it was 156 grams of protein per day. And a year later, it's 58. The guy is 195 pounds and he wants you to believe, unbelievable, that he needs 58 grams of protein in a day. Are you confused? I don't even know what to say to that. Hey team, Mike here at After 40 Fitness, after40fitness.ca. I'm gonna go on a little rant here, and it's about this too much protein nonsense, absolute bullshit that I don't even understand how in 2020 we're still throwing around the phrase too much protein. It, it just pisses me right off, the innuendo, the misinformation, the misapplication of, I'm gonna call it science, but it's not, it's pseudoscience. Just the dogma, the dogma is just silly. Anyway, listen, before I get into my rant, if this is your first time in my channel or you haven't yet, please do subscribe, hit that like button. Uh, if you do enjoy this kind of content in and around the keto Atkins and low carb space, and particularly for people over 40 or like myself over 50, this is the space I live in. So punch that like button and don't forget to subscribe. And if any of this content is important to you and you want to share it, uh, please do. Right? I don't mind that at all. So we'll talk about what too much means. Because while that is used every day, while every day I see you have to limit your protein and too much protein can do this, it can kick you out of ketosis, too much protein turns into glucose, no one wants to define what too much means. Well, you're going to enjoy this because by the time I'm done, the couple of studies I'm going to show you show that too much is more than you and I can reasonably ingest in a day. If your macro for protein is 80 grams a day, trust me, 85 is not going to kick you out of ketosis. You can double it, if not triple it, maybe triple might be when you begin to see an impact from too much protein. And at the end of this, we're gonna walk away with a number. I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove it to you with some science about the kind of number that you should be aiming at based on your body weight. It has nothing to do with your macro. If you think for a second that some application like MyFitnessPal or Carb Manager gives you a number of like 75 grams a day, that that means anything, stop that. It's silly. It's silly to think that Carb Manager that uses some algorithm based on your BMI and your height and your weight can in any way, shape or form tell you your protein. So dumb that people throw, oh, I can't exceed the 75 grams a day. Nonsense, nonsense. Okay, we'll talk about that. So first, where did this information come from? You know something, Thomas DeLauer, uh, I call him my buddy, but this is one of those places where, well, I will say this, Thomas DeLauer's come around. Dr. Berg hasn't. Dr. Berg is still a moron when it comes to too much protein. He still talks about too much protein and doesn't quantify it at all and makes everyone, all of his listeners and followers and subscribers absolutely afraid of protein in 2020. Ridiculous, ridiculous. Thomas DeLauer used to do that, but at least he's come around. At least he's had a, a challenge of conscience and he stepped forward and said, okay, I made a mistake. Now, I have to fall on the sword here a little bit. A couple of years ago, I used to believe that too much protein would kick you out of keto. But the fact is, when we start looking at the science, and now there's a lot more science surrounding the keto world, we find that gluconeogenesis is a perfectly healthy process that doesn't necessarily kick you out of keto. Well, that's good news, right? Now we don't have to fear too much protein. We still don't know yet what too much protein means, but at least Thomas has come around that it won't kick us out of keto. So, well, what should we do then, Thomas, as far as our protein intake goes? So if you're doing a ketogenic diet, you're actually safer to increase your protein levels than you are to increase your fat levels. Well, that's good news, right? We can up our protein, but what if I have a slow metabolism? The number three way to go ahead and fix your metabolism up a little bit is don't be afraid to overeat, but overeat with protein. Uh, and that contrasts so greatly with Berg. Dr. Berg is uh, just so confusing. In fact, let's do this real quick. Here's a quick little exercise for you and I. Let's first go back and look at a video just three years ago where he uses a calculation to figure out his daily protein for the day. And I'm gonna invite you to do the same with your weight. Take your weight in pounds, use his calculation, and let's establish what our number should be of protein per day based on this video. Watch. Do not consume greater than 0.8 grams times your body weight. Perfect, so 0.8 grams per pound of body weight. Now, notice in the image, he goes on one step now and actually explains his calculation. So let's use his numbers first and then let's do the same for you and I. So because of course, Dr. Berg is American, he'll use the pound structure, not kilograms. That would work out to just so you know, for us Canadians and anywhere else in the world, 1.6 grams per kilogram. Not a bad number. I bet you're thinking to yourself, well, that seems okay. It sure does. But just to show you the, the confusion, bear with me. But at 0.8 per pound, he shows in the image known as 195. 
and 195, what does that work out of? At, at 0.8 grams per pound. And then he takes that value and divides it by his three meals. Is 156 divided by three meals is 52 grams for each of the three meals if he ate three meals in a day. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm sitting back going, perfect. Dr. Berg, nicely done. So where's the confusion? So if you wonder what that means, it's roughly 0.7 grams per kilogram of lean body mass. So for myself, I need about 58 grams of protein per day. I need about 58 grams of protein per day. 58 grams of protein per day. Somebody get this man some protein! I don't even know what to say. I don't, I, I don't get it. So three years ago, it was 156 grams of protein per day. And a year later, it's 58. The guy is 195 pounds and he wants you to believe Unbelievable that he needs 58 grams of protein in a day. Are you confused? I don't even know what to say to that. Anyway, it, it actually is worse than that because on top of Dr. Berg's agenda now to steer everyone away from protein and, uh, and, and drive down the numbers of the amount of protein you and I are eating, he, he does have this fear-mongering agenda. Uh, uh, here, let me just show you what I mean rather than try to describe it. And this is kind of like the top end. Like you don't want to go more than this because too much protein will convert to insulin and stop your ketosis. Too much insulin, um, too much uh, protein could also mess up your liver and the kidneys because it, it's just it's just too much for it to process. So I know he said that too much protein converts to insulin. I think that was just a misspeak because obviously it doesn't. Obviously too much protein doesn't convert to insulin. So I think he just meant that it, it impacts insulin. Maybe it spikes insulin is what he was trying to say. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. Uh, but nonetheless, can damage liver and kidneys. Uh, you know, he is a doctor, but he is a, he is a chiropractor. He's not a nephrologist because that's not backed up by any science ever. Right? In normal, healthy individuals, if anything, protein over and above your, your daily macro is healthy. Uh, no proof whatsoever comes out that people with, with healthy liver and kidneys have any issue with protein. So again, pure, pure fear, fear mongering. And notice that was from even three years ago. So even though I liked his number of 0.8 times per pound, that at least was in reference to a higher number of 156. Notice this one in the same video where he just said he only needs 58 for the day. The big problem with excessive amounts of protein consistently too frequently over a period of time is that you're gonna overload the, the stomach because you need a certain amount of hydrochloric acid to break that down. Low acid in the stomach, low hydrochloric acid. Sure, that could happen. But isn't the resolution of that to fix the problem, right? Take some betaine hydrochloride, some apple cider vinegar, and up the pH, sorry, down the pH, acidify the pH of your stomach to improve your assimilation and digestibility of amino acids, right? Just to say that you should avoid uh, protein because the, the as, as we age, the acidity of our stomach lessens. Well, that's just stupid. Uh, that's just dumb. Anyway, that's where the confusion comes from. That whether it's Thomas, at least like I say, he came around. At some point, Dr. Berg will not be able to refute the, uh, the science. Yeah. When figuring out our protein macro, what variables come into the picture? I'm going to tell you something. It's not gender. However, there are two things that should come into, into play. One is age and second is activity level. Obviously, a person who's sedentary, who's not challenged in their body in any way, shape, or form, or their, their tissue uh, breakdown versus synthesis processes in the body, obviously doesn't need more. They need less. And as we age, what do you think? Does a person, as they get older, need more or less? I'm going to show you one more clip from Dr. Berg. Notice what he says on this. Now, it's kind of a difficult question because you have so many variables. You have the person's age. For example, if they're 21 or 18, they're going to need more protein than someone like me that's 30 years old. Uh, nope, that's wrong. Uh, we need more protein as we age. In fact, he even just gave a reason. He just said that the acidity in our stomach is lessened as we age. Therefore, what do you think that means? That means we need more protein, not less. And then on top of that, there's sarcopenia, where we lose muscle and strength just due to age, right? So we need more to compensate. In fact, I checked with my buddy Gary Walker over at Live Anabolic. Notice what he says. When you get 40, 50, 60, you don't need less protein, you actually need more protein. Awesome, Gary, appreciate that. Thank you for the support. Hey, but listen, let me, let me ask you something. What do you think the right amount of protein is per pound or per kilogram in your experience with your clients? The studies, a lot of the studies show that you need about 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight. Yep, 
I've seen those same studies and I agree at 1.6 grams per kilogram, right? And so did Dr. Berg in the beginning because 1.6 grams per kilogram is 0.8 per pound. Is that where you are as well? Do you talk about 0.8 per pound? So I've always kept it simple. One gram of protein per pound of weight. Safe to say though that you use the 0.8 for people who are sedentary and the one gram per pound for those that are active? If you're following any kind of resistance training program, then I obviously am gonna recommend more because you're being more active. You're breaking down muscle. You're doing a lot more things that are going to require more protein. I do take the higher road though of, say, of saying one gram per pound if you're in any kind of a hit or resistance training program, which I hope you all are. I hope you've all watched my video and followed my recommendation to make sure that you're creating your caloric deficit via exercise. Resistance training or HIT are required to not only maintain muscle, but hopefully add a few ounces. Well, you're right, that's all metabolism. Okay, so I'm hoping you're doing that, in which case one gram per pound, key, or two grams per kilogram, okay? Is it possible to overdo it though? Let's, let's finish with this topic. Is there such a thing as too much that we introed with? Let me come right back with a, a video by Thomas. He talks about this. Now, you're probably looking for concrete numbers, okay? So let me give you some of that. Ultimately, what we've found with these studies is that we are good to go to consume three to four times the recommended daily allowance of protein. That begs a question. I hope you're thinking it. What is the RDA for protein? And just so you know, it is 0.4 grams per pound, which is 0.8 kilogram, uh, grams per kilogram, okay? So Thomas is saying here that three to four times the RDA seems to be the sweet spot, seems to be absolutely fine with no repercussions. Well, just so you know, if it's four, if four is the in grams per pound for you Americans, then let's go with three times, that's actually 1.2 grams per pound. So it appears in all the studies, and Thomas, oh, you know Thomas, as much as I try to think I'm the science guy, Thomas takes it to another level. And in all the studies he looked at, he couldn't find any adverse repercussions at 1.2. So the, our recommendation now today of one gram per pound is damn well safe. Conversely, for, for us Canadians and everywhere else in the world, if the RDA for grams of protein per kilogram is 0.8, then that works up to something over about 2.4. So again, coming back with a recommendation that if you're active, if you're doing any kind of resistance training or hit, but get your protein up to two grams per kilogram. Right, seems to be safe. What does it actually turn out to though as far as, as far as actual grams of protein per day? If we're told that we can consume you know, 100 grams of protein, realistically, we could probably go upwards of 300. Now, I'm not saying that everyone should. I'm just saying that's the number before we start seeing a slight increase in the ability for that protein to turn to fat. If you have anybody who's in the carnivore space like I do, some friends who are carnivores, they're regularly eating between 250 and 300 grams of protein a day. Guess what? My carnivore buddies are shredded. They're, by the way, they're in ketosis 100% of the time. Okay, so Dr. Berg ever saying that the high amounts of protein will kick you out of ketosis? Probably, probably. But to, to Thomas's point, it's in excess of 300 grams a day. Because my buddies between 250 and 300 are ketotic 100% of the time. So I think I'm hoping we've dealt with this enough that you'll stop. If you are one of those people who thinks that too much protein is something you can reasonably ingest in a day, no way, no way, stop it. It's not possible. You must be unreasonable in your protein intake and exceed 300 grams a day. So the next person, I'm hoping that if you've got come across anybody in your travels who says, you know, I, my protein macro is 120 grams and God bless, I, 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 can't, I don't want to go over it. Send them this link. They need to get this information. They need to know that they can safely go to 150, 170, 200 grams a day with zero risk of impact. So you guys talk about protein. I love protein. I love protein too. We know you love protein. Protein rocks. Awesome. I hope you got some information about that you can use, that you can leverage, that you appreciate. Uh, if you did have any comments, any feedback, please do put comments below. You know I'll take the best comments and questions and turn them into videos just like this one, and I do appreciate it. Please do punch that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. But on that note, I'll see you in the next one.